day once again, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests. How are you this evening? Awesome. awesome. Great, great. Let me say to you, you have already done something wonderful. You have been extremely patient with the start of this conference. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. But nonetheless, we are going to get started. My name is Lee Jones. I am the South Division Governor. Welcome to the South Division Evaluation and Human Speech Contest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. We will have a wonderful contest this evening. We have some great contestants, and I'm looking forward to a wonderful show. I'm going to move this program along right away. I'm going to bring to you the Master Mistress of Ceremonies, none other than the 2013 District 30 Table Topics winner, District 30, Sharice Harrington. Okay, I, I have to step down. I, I, I 
just not tall. God bless you, tall people out there. We will have two contests. We will have a humorous speech and the speech evaluation contest. The first contest will be the speech evaluation contest. And when that contest has concluded, we will have a 10-minute break. And after the break, we will conduct the humorous speech contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeants, sergeant at of arms have all been have all been prior to the beginning of this contest. They've all been given their rules and regulations. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest, and no one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. Please, you may do so if time permits. The minute of silence between presentations. Thank you. With that said, now let's let the contest begin. All right. Evaluation contest. We have five contestants. Contestant number one, Michael Casey. Contestant number one, Michael Casey. Contestant number two, Jeremiah Henderson. Contestant number two, Jeremiah Henderson. Contestant number three, Aaron Muldoon Stetson. Contestant number three, Aaron Muldoon Stetson. Contestant number four, Don Ellis. Contestant number four, Don Ellis. And our last contestant in our speech evaluation will be Michael Gugis. Gugis. Michael Gugis, contestant number five. Now, in order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we absolutely have to have someone to speak. We need a target speaker. And at this time, I'd like to welcome to the lectern target speaker, Andre Joseph, who will be giving a speech title Fulfill your purpose. Fulfill your purpose, Andre Joseph. Good evening, Toastmasters. Good evening. Good evening, Toastmasters. First off, Toastmasters, I just want to start out by saying, give it up for yourself. Give it up for yourself. about six, seven o'clock, and we could be a lot of other places right now. But you're right here trying to better yourself right now. You're right here trying to do better and make a better future for yourself right now. And that's kind of what separates us, Toastmasters, from a lot of other people out here. Because we're trying to better ourselves. And that's why I'm honored to be here today, to be able to talk to you guys. Now, my name is Andre Joseph. And the title of my speech is, Fulfill Your Purpose, Pursue Your Passion. Okay? You might want to write that down. You might want to write that down. Okay? It is, Fulfill Your Purpose and Pursue Your Passion. Okay? This is my new book, How to Be Successful with 17 Laws. And I'm going to go ahead and get right into it, guys, because we don't have a lot of time. we got to pursue our passion. We have to find out what is our purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? What makes your heart beat faster? When you wake up in the morning, what do you think about? What's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? What's your purpose in life? What would you do for free that people charge to do? What would you do for free? What would you do? that people normally charge every day, what would you go ahead and do that for free? That's, your, that's what you're passionate about. And when you find out what you're passionate about, that's how you can find out what your purpose in life is. Okay? Think about that. Think about people that don't have a purpose in life. Think about how miserable they are. We don't want to be like that. 
We want to have purpose. We want to have fulfillment in what we do. You want to wake up every morning and just get out the bed. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to go. Let me make where my phone at. What, what, I, got, I, already wrote, I already wrote my list of things to do yesterday, so I'm ready. Because I got a purpose in life. I know what I want to do. I was at the DMV the other day. And it was, it was, it, it drained all my energy, y'all. Let me take off the jacket so y'all can see my fancy shirt too. Yeah. <laughs> take it off real quick. So at any rate, though, I'm at the DMV the other day, and they, it, it, it drained my energy because everybody was just so lifeless. Hey, how are you doing? I'm like, hey, I just want to get my license so I can get out of here. All right, you gotta wait a second. Uh, anyway, uh, just they was just slouchy everything. And, and I, I identified with it, and I wasn't mad at them because I know that they hadn't found their purpose in life. This wasn't their purpose in life. And that's how we all get when we're not doing our purpose in life. We're not our best. You're not trying. It's a lack of commitment. You're like, man, that's not what I'm here for. And you don't want to do it anymore. The same thing with your passion. Even in marriage, you can have everything, but a lack of passion might tear that marriage apart. You gotta have passion about what you do. Everything that you do, you should be passionate about. Don't do something just to do it. Do it because that's what you love. That's why I wrote this book. Because I love people <laughs> similar to me. <laughs> I love people that's going for what, for what they want in life. I love people that's not stagnant. I hate being around stagnant people. Anybody who know me can, can tell you that. I like to be around go-getters, movers and shakers. But sometimes us movers and shakers, us Toastmasters, we don't have that right direction all the time. We don't always have the right tools. We don't always have the right laws. And that's what drove me to write this book, was to give people like us, Toastmasters, people with purpose in their life, people who want more out of life. I wrote this because I was passionate about helping people like us. i say that one more time. I wrote that because I was passionate about helping people like us. And that's what drove me to write this. And now I'm going all over the world now and talking about this and, explore, and exchanging information with people because I pursued what I was passionate about. You see how that ties around? Now you see how you plant that seed and now this is happening now, because, not because I did anything extra, but I pursued my passion. What's going to happen when you pursue your passion? That's my question. That's my question right now. What's going to happen when everybody in this room pursue their passion? <laughs> you better hold that side. You better hold that side. Because for real, and, and, and I've come to find out in life, people, that when you find out your purpose in life and you are actively going towards it, things move out of your way. Things move out of your way. Nothing can hold you back from your purpose in life. Now that's a fact. Okay, that's a fact bigger, better than every one of these facts on earth. Things will move out of your way when you are pursuing your purpose in life. And now all I ask of you today, people, is when you pursue your passion, when you find out your purpose, I want you to go 100 miles an hour running. And don't stop. Because tomorrow not promise. And you don't want to, you don't want to say whatever. So go out every day, as soon as you find that out, as soon as you take a little time to think about what your real purpose is, what you're passionate about, how you're going to do it, go every day at it. Go every day non-stop. And that's all I want y'all to do. And thank you, Toastmasters, for letting me share that message with you all. Thank you. Appreciate it.
these are out of the roll. And while they are done, how about we take this time to get to know our target speaker. Again, please help me welcome to the lectern, Mr. Andre Joseph. so I could receive this blessing and receive the knowledge that I needed. It was to slow down and, and be still. I think I can contribute a lot of my success right now to being still. So I think that's the main thing, is to just have a clear understanding of what you really want out of life, first and foremost. That's the only way you can get it. Absolutely. Great. Distractions too. Okay. Uh, we got so many distractions in our life, and 
I'm going to get really real, real quick. That's a lot. I'm get really real, real quick. I was put in a position that I didn't want to be in. A lot of my privileges were taken away. So I was forced into isolation. Okay? And, but that turned out to be a blessing because that's what I needed, though. I was moving 100 miles an hour. But isolation and getting rid of distractions, that's when you can really turn into your greatness. Okay. Well, thank talk. you. We are now ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestant and between each contestant. Keepers, when I advise you to do so, timekeepers, please signal me with the green light one minute when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be all will have all the time that they need to complete their battles. We will now begin the speech evaluation contest. Michael Casey, evaluation contestant number one, evaluation contestant number one, Michael Casey. Master, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and particularly Andre Joseph. Fulfill your purpose, pursue your passions. You know, something that sounds so obvious, but isn't always so, because how many of us can actually claim that we are pursuing our passion and fulfilling our purpose in life? Andre, the purpose of Andre's speech tonight, I believe, was to inspire the audience. And when you want to inspire your audience, you want to appeal them to improve personally, spiritually, or professionally, but you also want to tie that with strong emotional appeal. <coughs> did Andre do that tonight? Yes, I believe he did. And how did he do that? Well, first of all, he had the mechanics of any good speech. It had a definite opening, body, and close. And his opening had a hook, something that makes you want to listen more. And the hook was particularly effective because he talked about something that we've all experienced, a trip to the DMV. <laughs> now, believe me, Illinois' DMV is not the worst I've seen. You should try the guys in Massachusetts. <laughs> They're not only miserable, but they want to inflict their pain on you. <laughs> so we've all experienced that. That's what made it a great hook. So it got us all wanting to listen, added a little bit of humor, plus you showed us your t-shirt. That was outstanding. So you got us all engaged right anyway. And then you talked about how this became so important to you that you wrote a book. And the passion in your voice is obvious. It's obvious that you really feel strongly about what you're doing. But the body of your speech continued to expound about on how important that was to you and how we should do the same thing. You also did several other things very, very well during your speech. Your command of the stage area was good. Your vocal variety was excellent. The volume was fine. I could hear you. And you did have a strong connection with the audience. So all those things made your speech very effective. But there's a couple things that I might do to make a good speech into a great speech. First of all, I think you need to work on your grammar a little bit. You tend to drop your G's, say things like trying, and let's give it up, you know, a lot of colloquial type expressions. You may want to try to refine that a little bit. Things like, where's my phone at? You know, it's not real proper English. And you may want to improve on that a little bit. And also, give us some specific steps to walk away with. You motivated us that we need to fulfill our purpose and follow our passion. But some more specific steps, like from your book, would have been very helpful for us. 
But other than that, I think it was a great speech, and I look forward to hearing more. Madam Contest Master. Evaluation contested number two. Evaluation contested number two. Jeremiah Henderson. most distinguished guests and friends, and particularly you, Andre. Let me begin with your topic. I felt that your title was more than appropriate because it had what we call an anchor or a foundational phrase, not an anchor. Fulfill your purpose, pursue your passion. That's called a foundational phrase, nine or ten words or less that will hook your audience. And I thought that you hooked the audience as soon as you took the floor with your energy and your passion. I get the impression, Andre, that you were trying to convince me or encourage me to fulfill my passion and try to, for example, encourage me a, what do you call those speeches when you, oh, the speech where you're trying to get people to do something, whatever. But I got the impression you were trying to convince me to do that. You came out with energy. I love that energy and that passion right away. And then you're open. Let me tell you about that. You came out with a very strong opening, then you asked a question, and you forever told the people, you need to fulfill your passion. So that opening was great. I thought that your message was fundamentally sound from day one. The second thing, now I would like to speak about the speech yourself. I thought the speech was good, but somewhat thin, Andre, because I was waiting for you to give me the title of the book. You said it was a book. That was some supporting evidence. I'm waiting, convince me. Here's the book. Why did you write the book? I was looking for that. So I didn't hear that, but still I can understand your purpose. And secondly, I thought this would have made your, your speech very, very strong. It's called an anchor. I wish you had built a story in your story to tell your story. Because a story will give you a message and it will solidify it, and people will remember the story long, 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 long after they have remembered, after they have forgotten the speech. So I would have liked to, for you to have convinced me. You gave us some good, good reasons. You need to do this. You said it's good if you do this, but if you don't, this is what will happen to you. I wanted to hear a, a fundamental story, a good story about yourself, why you wrote the book, Andre. Convince me. What made you write the book, and what consequences would you might have suffered had you not written the book? But I still, I got your message, it was the passion. Let me talk about the other three elements. The other three, how you delivered that speech. Verbal, vocal, and visual. Those are the three channels of communication. I thought verbally it was good. I would have liked to see, even though you were affected, I wanted to hear some stronger words. Stronger words. Words that would grab my heart 
don't speak to me. I wanted you to speak to my soul, but I still got a little bit of that. I know you still you did your purpose. Vocal. Vocal variety. Great. But I would like to have seen a lot more of your vocal variety. And all in all, I think that you gave a, a tremendous speech, and I would love to hear you give more speeches as you transition from good to great to extraordinary. Aaron Muldoon Stetson. Evaluation <coughs> contested number three. Aaron Muldoon Stetson. variety 
so that we can really understand where you're coming from and get excited, even more excited than we already are. I am so impressed with everything you've done. I'm delighted to be here today to witness your grandeur. It's really a delight to be here. Thank you so much for sharing with us for your courage, for your action, and for your passion, which comes through so clearly. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark the balance. Don Ellis, evaluation contestant number four, evaluation contestant number four, Don Ellis. Thank you, and I leave here tonight 
motivated to pursue my passion. Madam Hostess. Silent. 
ballot while the judges complete the ballots and have them collected by the ballot counter. While we are waiting for the votes to be counted, we will hear from our contest chair, Lee T. Jones. And he will give us all the exciting and he will just be excited. <laughs> Contest chair, we have all the ballots at this time. Okay. And now, while we are waiting for the votes to be counted, we will hear from our contest chair, Mr. Lee Tinko. Well, correction, we will hear from our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training. <laughs> Meeting. For those that don't have to go to the business meeting, 
Some of us do. Of course, we want to. We have two educational sessions. The first one is Improve with Improv by Ellen Schnur. It's great. Everybody went to her storytelling one. They loved it. And following is our world-class champion, Prez, who's going to tell you. Then we have lunch, and of course, Dwayne will be speaking. And then after that, we have a huge red carpet ceremony. Do you know that 124 clubs last year were distinguished? Woo! All yes. those clubs get to march and walk on the red carpet, get yes. trophies. <gasps> and then we have a photographer there taking pictures, and you'll get pictures of your club walking the red carpet. And anyone who's made it this year, we already have some clubs that have at least five points this year. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> then we have a club ambassador, we have triple crown, we have the Toastmaster of the Year and all that stuff. Okay? Four o'clock, humorous contest. Yay. Six o'clock, dinner, we have the DTM ceremony. And then what I am so proud of, I wanted to have fun. I've added karaoke. <laughs> and Ethel and I are gonna be the first act <laughs> <laughs> of Evaluations after. <laughs> well, we are going to have judging and there are going to be trophies. So you have to at least stop for a while. Now, this is leading by example, getting out of your comfort zone. I can't, I'm going to need a drink at least one. <laughs> so, I hope you will all make it. On the back here, I have the song so far that we have. You can start picking out your song. We're doing stuff. Okay. All right. There's one upstairs and one down. Ten minutes and we will come back.